Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and I'm now answering question number three from the May June 2024 Pure Mathematics P1 paper from K from Edexcel International A level. And here we have two particles P and Q. Their masses are given as four and two m respectively. The particles are connected by light and extensible string. So there's a, a string connecting these two particles. And a second light in an sexual string has one end attached to Q. Both strings are taut and vertical as shown in figure one. The particles are accelerating downwards. Okay. Given that the tension in the string connecting the two particles is mg, so we have a tension connecting those two. Okay, so um, that tension is 3mg. So the tension in the lower string is 3mg. Fine, in terms of M and G, the tension in the upper string. Right, so I've got this diagram copied down here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the forces acting on Q and P separately. Let's start with P. The forces acting on P are the tension in the lower string and also its weight. Okay, the weight. Those are the forces acting on P. Right. So one of the things students have a big problem with is when you have to consider forces in connected particles. So the weight on P is 4mg and the tension acting on it is T, the tension in that, that string connected them, which we know is equal to 3mg. So this is equal to 3mg. Now people say, hold on, how about the Q? How can you just ignore Q? It's there, there's a tension in this string, there's a weight to this. Why are you ignoring it? Well, I'm not ignoring it because the tension in this string is affected by the tension in that string. The tension in this string is affected by the weight of this particle. The tension in this string is affected by how it's accelerating, right? So this tension in the string is affected by those things. But what we're doing is we're isolating one part of the system on its own. Okay, because we want to find what that tension is. So we're isolating one part of the system. So I want to find the tension on the, on the string above it. So by doing this, I can find actually now the acceleration. I can find the acceleration of the system. Okay. So the acceleration of the system, we can resolve the forces going downwards because it's, it's moving down, take down as positive. So I'll have 4mg minus t, which is 3mg is equal to the mass, which is 4m, times the acceleration, which is a. So the m's will cancel out. I'm left with 4g minus 3g, which is g, is equal to 4a. So the acceleration of the system is 1 over 4g meters per second squared. That is the acceleration of the system. All right now, I know the acceleration of the system. Now what I can do is I can focus and just consider q alone. So now I'm going to consider q alone. So this is when we considered p. And this is when we consider Q now. So if we consider Q, what forces are acting on Q? Well, you have the tension in the upper string. Okay, the tension in the upper string. Okay, which is what we have to find. So we're going to call that T. That's what we have to find, that tension. We also have the tension in the lower string, which we know is 3G, uh, 3, 3 mg. Okay, that told us. And we also have its weight. So you have the weight. But there's also the tension in the lower string acting on this downwards. If we consider, if we consider the particle Q, the tension acting on it from this string is going to be acting downwards. If we consider particle P, the tension acting on it um, you know, from the string will be acting upwards. Okay. So in this case, you're going to have your 3mg, which is the tension. Okay. And you're going to have your weight, which is 2mg. So again, it's accelerating downwards, but we now know the acceleration is a quarter g. So if we take down as positive, because it's going downwards, we have 3mg minus 2mg and plus t, okay? Uh, sorry, minus, sorry, 3mg plus 2mg. What am I doing? Let's start that again, sorry. So you have 3mg plus 2mg, because they're both acting down. Minus T, why? Because that's acting up, equals the mass, which is 2M, times the acceleration, 
I'll just put 2MA for now. We know that such is equal to G. That's going to give me 5MG minus T is equal to 2 times M times a quarter G. So you have 5MG, 5MG minus T is equal to, that's going to be half MG. So if we find what T is, T is going to be 5 minus a half, 10 over, 10 over 2 minus 1 over 2, which is 9 over 2 mg newtons. Okay, so there's the answer for the tension. Okay, 9 over 2 mg. So there we have the answer. That's the same as saying 4.5 mg if you want, or 4.5 mg. Okay, so there's the answer to this question. Question number three. So the question is a question which I'm sure a lot of students get confused with because of this uh, misunderstanding that students have with the whole concept of connected particles. When we're considering Q alone and P alone, we have to think in a slightly different way. So I'm con when you consider Q alone, we're thinking about only the forces acting on Q, which is the tension in the string acting down and the, and the, um, the weight acting down and the tension in the upper string. So the tension in the string acting down, okay, this tension here, it's affected by the weight of P. Yes, and it's also affected by how it, how the whole thing is accelerating. So don't think when we uh, are, you know, we'll, with, we, we've got this tension here that we're ignoring the weight of P. No, this tension is like affected by that weight. If that weight was different, that tension would be also be different. So we're not like ignoring these forces, but we're just considering the forces directly acting on Q alone. Not indirectly, directly. The direct forces acting on Q that's what we're doing. And we're looking at P, we're looking at the forces directly acting on P alone, which is just the tension in this string and the weight. And that tension in the string is affected by what's happening up here. And that's, uh, you know, um, caused it to have the value that it does have. It's also affected by the acceleration and everything. So we have to be very, very clear when we're doing these questions, not to get confused. Take things one object at a time and just consider the forces acting on those directly alone. And you get to the answer very easily then. Okay, so there's the answer to number three from the June 2024 paper. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in the top right of this screen at the end of the video. Other questions from the topic of connected particles in the bottom right here, you will find um, the subscription if you want to subscribe, the link over here and the video at the top here will show you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.